All right, I just had to start recording. This was too damn funny. So I was scrolling around on Twitter like I usually do. I mean, you could follow me on Twitter if you want. I don't even tweet that much, but basically NZXT made this post, all right? What would you change? New PC specs, AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D, GPU, AMD Radeon RX 7900XTX, RAM 32 gigabytes, 6,000 megahertz, SSD, one terabyte, MOBO, NZXT, AIO, NZXT, fans, yeah, 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 you get the point. Most of it's NZXT stuff except for the AMD parts and the SSD and the RAM. But what I found absolutely hilarious is what would you change? And I scrolled down in these replies. Now, I know Twitter replies can be a scary thing and that sometimes scrolling down in them can be dangerous, but I'm going to take that risk just specifically for this video because it is just so funny. Look at how, like... I just don't even know how to interpret these replies. They're just so daunting to me. Swap the 7900 XTX with a 4090. Swap the video for an RTX 4090. Add 32 gigabytes more RAM. Swap the NVMe SSD for a 4 terabyte. GPU. Change the damn GPU. We need more NVIDIA GPU for gaming plus machine learning tasks. Machine learning tasks. I'm not sure if people understand this. AMD can do that too. There is a workaround for it. It lets you. There is literally a way you can force the raw GPU itself to do machine learning. AMD does actually have its own machine learning capabilities. Then here. Minimum, two terabyte SSD, minimum these days. 64 gigabytes of RAM, four terabyte SSD. So, SSD need four terabyte minimum if you're a serious gamer. Six terabyte if you use other applications as well. Okay, noise suppression is probably cutting out my laughter. PSU as well, Corsair. Sorry, NZXT, but then... Okay, number one, there's definitely something better than a Corsair power supply. And I do not understand why people are so hard set about that. You can use a different power supply just as long as the rating is good. In fact, I might even give a power supply tier list in the description that you can follow that I've always been following. Move from six, move to 64 or 128 gigabytes of RAM. Move the SSD to four terabyte and make sure the MB has an M.2 drive to get two terabyte for MD. Oh my God, bro. Some of these people, I cannot believe these replies. So this person's argument is for Windows, other programs have dedicated to be memory hogs. I have one tab open right now. I also have Discord open in the background, Razer Synapse, Process Lasso, and OBS. OBS is the biggest memory hog I have right now because I have tons of like plugins and extensions and stuff like that. Does it? really look like I'm struggling for RAM here. And I have 32 gigs of RAM. I have had 32 gigs of RAM for ages. I have yet to max it out. Now, if you're playing simulation games or doing 3D modeling, or you have like an insane game that uses a shitload of mods like Minecraft, then it can be understandable that you could use 64 gigabytes of RAM. But these people are just being absolutely nonsensible. The XTX out for a 4080. Pure rasterization power isn't good enough for a video card. Guys, I swear every single one of the people in these comments knows absolutely nothing about how a computer functions. Everybody has their own different uses. This person's saying that pure rasterization power isn't all there and is too... In, is to a good video card. It is a good video card. The 7900 XTX has even beat a 4090 in some scenarios. In fact, it's actually better value for your money than a 4090. It is absolutely insane. Like these people. Oh, nice. We got an 18 plus uh, account here. That's cool. 
needs more SSD space. One terabyte isn't nearly enough these days. I beg to differ. Okay, so if you take a look here, these are all the drives I have. So this is my local drive. This is my boot drive. I always try to keep my boot drive as clean as possible. And I do actually have games on my boot drive, but I periodically move them to my games drive or my extra storage drive if I do not have like enough time to play them or if I don't play them enough. I have been perfectly fine with this as long as I move games over to my other drives. There's nothing wrong with having low storage on your boot drive. The only reason you would ever need more storage on your boot drive is if you're too stupid to know how to move games over to other drives. So like my games drive, I have my Steam games, my Epic games, and on my storage drive, I even have a couple of games like my excess bulk Steam games that I just don't want to redownload or on my hard drive there. And like, I've been running this NVMe SSD for so long, this 500 gigabyte SSD. It's been about like almost, yeah, damn near three years now. It's been chugging along doing just fine. Okay, let's just keep looking at a bunch of these hilarious replies. Get rid of the AIO. Four years, two pump fails, not a single issue with fan cooling attempts is a three degree either way. I 100% agree with this person. Switch it out for an air cooler. Water cooling is overrated. Water cooling is meant for overclockers only, and it is absolutely stupid. Like, in my personal opinion, I will never build a water-cooled rig. Do you know why I'll never build a water-cooled rig? Because of the failure rate and the amount of damage that happens when an AIO fails outweighs the benefits of the decreased temperatures. If you look statistically at the results, air coolers are almost reliable 90% of the time. AIOs, maybe 60, 70% of the time, depending on what brand you go with or whatever. But from my experience, any build that I have seen that has had a water cooler has either had a pump failure or has had some sort of issue like a gummed up block or something like that that causes temps to just go through the wall. I guess the best example I could give of this is a streamer by the name of BTMC where... I was watching his stream and he was, his game was lagging super bad or whatever. Over the months, he had his uh, custom water looped build, which had distilled water in it, by the way, mind you, is because the block got gummed up and also he didn't top off the water level. Uh, and he was using a 5950X, which is a 16 core, 32 thread CPU that can pull almost 200 watts from the wall which is absolutely insane and now mind you this was a custom water build so of course there could have been mistakes in it but we found out that basically aios are not the way to go and the other pc that he's using also had an aio failure he switched over to another pc and had the same exact issue happen to him anyways i'm gonna probably make a whole nother video about air cooling versus aios in another video, let's just keep scrolling through these absolutely hilarious replies. I'd likely increase the RAM from 32 gigabyte to 64 as I change out gold power out the gold power supply for a platinum one when you're talking that high wattage. Okay, listen, listen. If power efficiency was on your mind, you would not be getting a build this powerful. You would be getting a probably four core or six core CPU with a high clock speed and a lower end graphics card so that you could run your build. My PC doesn't pull more than maybe 400, 450 Watts from the wall. And that is perfectly fine for me and perfectly adequate, adequate for me. The only reason I could see power efficiency mattering is if you're in a third world country or in a place that has very unreliable power and like, Platinum power supplies have been proven, it's been proven time and time again, even Gamers Nexus has said that platinum power supplies, as efficient as they are, the price is really not justifiable for that efficiency. Gold is fine. Gold is fine for like 90% of people. You do not need a platinum power supply unless you want that dead solid reliability and a waste of money, not to mention. PSU is overkill. 
and GPU since NVIDIA is way better. What was the PSU again that they were using? Let me scroll up and find out quick. Okay, so in this example, they were using a 1200 watt gold power supply. Now, I would argue that this claim is absolutely untrue. For those specific components, yes, the CPU isn't going to pull that much. It's probably only going to pull about 150, 160 watts maximum, the 7800X3D. And the GPU is probably going to pull a maximum of around 400-ish, 500-ish watts, depending on load. So, like, realistically, you could probably get away with an 800 watt. So, like... I can understand why they say that, but over specking a power supply in a build is actually a better idea. And I recommend it for like 90% of builds. Always spec your power supply at least a bare minimum of 100 watts higher than your power budget. So like if I was building a computer that was on a lower end budget, I would still get them a 500 watt power supply. Even if I was using a graphics card that did not require a six pin or an eight pin power connector, I would still give them a 500 watt power supply. It's just nature. I rely on NVENC or NVENC for all my streaming needs, so I'd swap to a 4080 Super. Well, here's the thing, buddy O. With AV1 being around now, the comparison is basically negligible between all the brands combined. It is so minimal, in fact, that multiple tests that I've seen from a amazing YouTuber by the name of Epos Vox has debunked this multiple times in his videos. By the way, if you want a really good in-depth video about how, how AV1 works, this guy's channel, he basically explains everything. Now, I'm not going to find the exact video of it but like it's on his channel i'm i'm probably going to put it in the description as well and in the comments after this video but essentially just watch his video there is literally no difference between the three anymore it's so negligible so negligible like it is absolutely insane all right let's keep looking through some of these comments if you've got the budget 64 gigabytes of ram this this is the correct way to word this comment Stop not giving context if you got the budget. So they're saying if you have the budget, yes, it's a nice to have thing. Most people who are going to be buying a pre-built don't know anything about a computer and they're just looking for a computer that's within their budget. And so they're going to be looking at this build and be like, I don't know anything about this and I'm just going to buy that. So like, that's what pre-built companies are made for, is people who don't know anything about computers and they just want a computer that functions and can play games. And this person is saying, if you got the budget, then yes, it's good. I 100% agree with you, let be, let for be, or however you say that, or S fire. I don't know who that is. I would definitely change to the, cr to the crack, I would definitely change the crack into a cooler that actually works and has software that isn't trash. I 100% disagree with this, by the way. NCXT Cam is like a godsend of a monitoring software. It does take a little bit more resources than, say, something like Hardware Info 64, which, by the way, if you're not using Hardware Info 64, download it. It is like the most amazing open source monitor out there. Anyways, I would disagree with this claim. It is not buggy. It does not have problems. You're just not using it correctly. And it's user error, most likely. And I'm not trying to say that, like, you should use NZXT Cam as your monitoring software, but, like, it is not trash. It is literally built for their hardware, for their coolers. And it's your fault if you're not using it correctly. So, yeah. I mean, I will agree that Razer's software is absolute trash. Razer Central... Yeah, this software has not been updated in years and needs an update. It is terrible. I absolutely despise that. Yet I have two Razer products that I own just because of the way they are. Anyways, moving on here. GPU to a 4090. What is with people and wanting to switch to a 4090? Guys, 4090 is not the highest end performing GPU anymore. 
this 7900 XTX has been shown again. Again, I'm just going to say this again. I know I'm repeating myself like a broken record, but the 7900 XTX is literally on par with a 4090 and it only barely like at the 4090 barely edges out the XTX just with pure like clock speed. The like they they push this thing to the absolute maximum with power. That's not how you win a race to performance. Now, in contrast, the 7900 XTX is not only higher clock speed, so it is running at close to 3 gigahertz on the core, but it also has higher bend memory. That's right, you heard me, higher bend memory. AMD cards, they are not good at memory overclocking, and you want to know why. It's because the memory is already pushed to the maximum from the factory. So you do not need to overclock the memory on your graphics card if you have an AMD graphics card, because most likely it has already been like picked and prodded to be the best memory for that specific card. And how do I know this is because I tried overclocking the memory on my friend's uh, 7800, uh, 7800 NVIDIA card. And there was literally no difference. And when I overclocked it, he had instability issues. But when I left it there and I just increased the core clock to around 2.9 gigahertz, he had absolutely no issues. So core speed way, way higher on a 7900 XTX than the 4090, which can only do like close to 2600, maybe 2500 megahertz on the core, which is ridiculous. Um, and not only that, it pulls like almost 600 Watts, which is nuts. The GPU, it'll always be Nvidia for me again, bias opinion, not enough Ram plus storage. Also inaccurate. I've already went up to this. The processor in the HDD storage, one terabyte isn't enough for gamers. If you're playing games that are consecutively gigantic, yes, this is true, but most people buy PCs. I would say when they get into gaming for not AAA titles, but for lightweight titles like competitive gaming or whatever, or they're upgrading or whatever. I mean, if you're looking for more storage, there's a reason why PC gaming is so huge. You can literally take the device out of your PC and upgrade it. So even if you buy a pre-built, a lot of the pre-built manufacturers nowadays are allowing you to upgrade. The only one that I haven't seen that's allowed to do that is Alienware. Alienware has a terrible track record of not allowing you to upgrade components and you should never buy a pre-built from them, period. Okay, I hate, I have this. This is the exact build I'm doing for my next PC, based. Okay, just add two terabyte MVME gamers and editing software. We're all good with that. Okay, cool. Uh, shit, maybe throw in an NVIDIA card. Yeah, nope, don't care about that. SSD needs to be at least four terabyte for gamers nowadays. Ne games nowadays are 500 gigabyte per game. No, they are not. That is, okay, the only outlier for that is Call of Duty. Call of Duty is always 200 plus gigabyte. For some odd reason, that AMD to NVIDIA RTX 4090. Why are people saying to use an RTX 4090? This is absolutely ridiculous. And like, I just do not understand. Radeon GPU to NVIDIA card. Guys, there is almost no difference. I am going to bring up a video right now to show this. I am just so floored with everybody saying this. Here's Gamers Nexus video. Now, this was a year ago, and drivers have come a long ways, but, like, here's the difference. Like, I can understand, like, a 100 FPS difference, but the price difference is absolutely insane. Like, also, most people can't tell the difference between 200 FPS and 300 FPS. Like, there are so many people out there who are not going to care about that. And I know people who would be even fine with 60 FPS in most games. Like, they would not notice this difference here. And, like, let's just skip around here. Let's, let's take a look at the... Uh, is there any uh, benchmarks in here for CSGO or like uh, anything else? Hold on. Total Warhammer 3, Tomb Raider, Final Fantasy. Let me try and find one with like a uh, standard title. 
All right, here's a video that was made seven days ago. I have absolutely no idea what this channel is, so I have absolutely no bias. So you take a look here, 193 FPS, 168. Who is going to notice that difference between 20 FPS? Also, look at the 0.1% low on NVIDIA. 26 FPS compared to 91 on the 7900 XTX. Do you see what I mean? by the difference in drivers. And they're using the same 7800X3D as in this build on the Twitter post. You can see the difference. It is absolutely insane. And like, if we go to a game like Cyberpunk 2077, okay, yeah, the difference is humongous because ray tracing and like effects and stuff like that. And then explain to me this. Okay, if you're not playing ray tracing games and you're mainly playing games that are like no ray tracing and are like easy to run, like you take a look at all the ray tracing benchmarks, obviously they're going to favor Nvidia because they don't have any ray tracing cores on the 7900 XTX and it's just using pure rasterization to make up for it. I don't know if that's changed or if anything like that, but like it's just... It's just such a terrible argument. You could turn off ray tracing and not even notice that much of a difference. Like, I can't even tell the difference in graphics compared to ray tracing. And I've turned it on and the penalty is so high for ray tracing. Also, how do we not know that this person turned on DLSS? Like, there's no, like, telltale sign. So, like, they did they, did they do all ultra on everything? So, like, everything on ultra here. 1440p windowed, everything on ultra, ray traced reflections on. Okay, so they did have ray tracing on for this benchmark. But my point being, as long as you turn off ray tracing on here, and I mean, dude, games these days are looking so good, you really don't need ray tracing. All right, moving along, let's just keep looking here. Oh, it's my favorite buddy, HexOS. All right, hey, look at that. It's HexOS. The home server os that is designed for simplicity yep home os or hex os i have heard many a story about that in fact i am going to probably cover this in another video to be honest with you there's a whole lot to talk about with that so we'll just go on i find that funny that they even replied to that okay one terabyte ssd more like two terabyte i'd put a four terabyte in there at least 64 gigabyte of ram two terabyte and a four terabyte it's just the same 64 gigabyte of RAM, otherwise it's a sweet spec. Okay, wait for the 9800X3D to re release next month. Wait for the PS5 Pro and call it a day. Oh my God, RTX or Ryzen 4070 Ti. Okay, that's the best reply I've seen so far in this entire comment section. 64 gigabyte, more SSDs. Okay, need more storage, yo. Okay, I get it. Cool, man. You make videos. Lowballed on the RAM much? Dude, what is with all these people? RTX 4090. It's all RTX 4090 or 64 gigabytes of RAM. What are you doing? You're giving no context as to why you need 64 gigabytes of RAM. Give context, and then I will make the argument for you. Otherwise, this is a perfectly acceptable build. Anybody would love this. And I, I'm just going to take a random guess. And I'm going to say that this build is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of around four ish, maybe five to six thousand dollars USD, which honestly isn't even that bad for the spec you're getting. Also, six thousand megahertz is totally fine for this for a 7800 X3D. And like uh, any person would be absolutely happy with this build. Like I would even be happy with this build. Like if, if if I could afford it and I could like have it, I would have it. Or if I was given it was given to me, I would love it. Personally, I've been getting fine just with I've been getting along just fine here with my 5600X, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and RTX 3060. Again, the only reason I have the RTX 3060 is so I can record videos like this with the NVENC encoder. But like, there's no reason why you shouldn't go with AMD just because of the encoder. Like like I said, AV1. Difference negligible nowadays. Well, thanks for listening to me yap for like 30 minutes. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this Lewis Rossman type video.
I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that is.